Hello, I'm Greg Fowler and welcome back to my shop. Um, in this video I am going over the molding planes that I have and you know what each one of them does and the condition of it. Just show you what I have just for fun because after this video I'm going to be doing a video on what to look for when buying molding planes and wooden planes in general. So yeah, um, I'll take you in and have a closer look at these. Um, so here are my molding planes. Well, some of them, like there's a few wrap planes in here and, uh, you know, stuff like that and a few tongue planes, but I'm just going to broadly call them molding planes because they're in the molding plane style and what have you. So I'm going to start at this end and work my way down. Um, this plane right here, it is a, it was holding up the row there, it is a, what's it called? It's a stick and rebate plane it is for doing uh, wind or sash and rebate something like that and it's for doing the window sash and one cuts the rebate for the glass and the other one cuts the the rebate for the glass and the other one cuts the rest of the profile for the sash and this one is made by Geo Burnham Amherst Massachusetts and whoever the owner was, his initials were DSS. The next plane here is a beading plane, side bead. It is a 5 8 beading plane, right there. This one's in awesome condition, a great gift from my sister. One of the best Christmas gifts I've ever gotten. Um, and it is made by Greenfield Tool Co. Greenfield, Massachusetts. And this is like made in 1800s and I think this one was too. Uh, yeah. Most of them are made in 1800s and I have a few that I think are older but I'm not 100% sure. Um, here's a, the next one. This is a uh, tonguing plane. Yeah, tonguing plane. I don't have the groove side but it's tonguing plane. Uh, 7 8 tongue plane. And then there's a 70 and a 10. Don't know what that means, but they're stamped on the back. And this one's in perfect condition. Um, and the wedge is hammered in there, but the, it's just in amazing condition. And I think I got it for 10 bucks. Um, I'm going to skip over the next one because it is the exact same. Oh, I forgot to say, it was made by Arthur Monty or A. Monty in Roxton, Roxton Pond, Quebec, Canada. I'm a Canadian, so that's sort of neat. And yeah, so these two are the exact same. Actually, they're slightly different sizes, I think. But other than that, they're the exact same plane. Very close. Um, the next plane I have here is a OG plane, I'm pretty sure. And as you can see here, it has this fence, or depth stop, I guess it would technically be, holding it on the spring line but it's missing the fence on this side so it's really hard to hold. For some reason somebody planed it off, you can see where it used to be and then it tacked on another fence and that fence is gone. So I'm going to have to fix that but other than that this plane's in great condition and it is made by Union Union Victory or Union yeah, Union Victory or Something like that. Uh, warranted H. Chapin. H. Chapin is a quite a well-known plane maker. Uh, this one here is a, I'm pretty sure it's a homemade. Is it a hollow? I think it's a hollow plane because it makes a hollow. Um, yeah, hollow plane. It was missing the wedge. I made my own wedge out of beach. And yeah, it's a nice little plane. Works quite well. Need some reshaping, but neat plane and the size isn't stamped on the back so that's all I know about that one here is a really big side bead it's humongous um, I haven't used it really cuz it's too big to use on anything there's some checking there but I don't think it's hurting anything there's no checking on the back um, this one's made by Jay Dennison and the size on it it just says one so it's number one, and there's the owner marks on the back. It's a bit good. It's a, it, it has some rot there, but 
I mean it's past the wedge and it's just sort of up here so you know other than that it's in great condition you know boxing's intact it has the double boxing wear strips it's pretty neat the next one's down the line this is a uh, a comp like a I forget what type of profile this is called but it's this one's in rough shape it's an older one um, it's got clogged up I was just messing around with it haven't quite got it set up right so the mouth is clogged and all that um, yeah it needs some reshaping on the sole and just a lot of work but it's made by Icox or Jaycox um, and it was owned by Jay Sweetser and this is one of the old ones I think he was an English maker and I forget when it was from but I think it's I'm pretty sure it's an older one quite a well-known maker um, here is a Davis plane it is another side bead in rough shape uh, just really you know really well used and some of the boxing is missing back here uh, I don't know the size on this the size is missing but you know it's a neat little plane it still works though to my surprise but I don't use it very much it's more of just a sitting on the shelf showpiece this next one is a round plane uh, it's made by oh did I say yeah I may say I made that one it's made by J. Clark with an E, uh, Liverpool, and it is a number 14 out of a set of hollows and rounds, which all of its brothers and sisters disappeared, but I got this one. And I don't use it much, but, you know, it needs work, it needs sharpened. I haven't gotten around to it yet. It's gotten a coat of linseed oil, but that's it. Um, this is a rebate plane made by nobody. Just has the make, just has the owner's mark on it there. Um, but yeah, it was really out of it. Was really not true. So I trued it up. Since it's just like a, it was a homemade one. I wasn't too sad about actually making it, uh, taking away from the value of it. And this one, it is. Probably in its day, it was an inch and a quarter. I'd say. No, sorry. Inch and three quarter. Rabbit plane. Skew rabbit plane. Um, the next one coming up here is a. Oh, I know this one. It's an Auburn Toolco, Auburn, New York. Uh, Wayne Scott plane. And the boxing is all beat up. I still haven't gotten this one to work. The boxing is loose. You know, technically. I don't know, it's not coming out, but I thought it might since it's winter. Uh, but it needs glued back in there, and this one's in rough shape. It needs restored still. It is a number 108 and 3 16 So there's that one. I, this is one of my smaller planes, which is really neat. It's really thin. Uh, I find that quite interesting. And then here is another round plane. Um, no number on it. No maker's mark, so I'm assuming it's a homemade one and something other than beech or birch for the um, wedge looks like an, either an oak or an ash sort of neat and yeah it's the blade is slightly out of shape but it still works I've been using it a bit be careful with the planes <laughs> um, here's another brown plane which is really quite beat up needs restored. I don't know if I'm going to restore this. This one just might be, uh, you know, sitting on a shelf one because I have a couple other, you know, ones like this and this one doesn't need made. Um, this is a something or other plane made by Turner uh, Queen Street Queen T. Turner and made in Sheffield. Um, missing the blade. The blade that came in, it was actually a plow plane blade and it didn't fit in here. So that was good because I needed that blade for my plow plane anyway. 
Um, last but not least, another rabbit plane which I just treat up the sole. And this one is made by. I think it's another Union plane. I can't quite tell. And it is. inch and just slightly under three quarter. So I don't know what happened there, but yep. And one that could technically qualify as a molding plane is this big, big old one. I don't know what it was for. Maybe somebody in the comments can give me a hint on what it was for, but it has a curved sole and it's like the size of a big smoother. And no marks on it other than the owner, which is Jay Griffith. And he was quite proud of his plane because it stamped in like four times. And the blade is a Spear and Jackson blade. But I have no clue what this is for. I just thought it was cool and picked it up. And my other, last but not least, is Cox and Luckman uh, plow plane, which does, isn't quite a molding plane, but it really falls under the same, uh, the same, you know, type of planes as these other planes. And this is the blade I was talking about that's for a plow plane. And it was good because I needed it for this one anyway. So there you go. There was a look at my molding planes. Next, I'm going to show you. Yeah, never mind. Yep, so there's all my molding planes. Hope you enjoyed. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. And share this with your woodworking friends. Thank you.